All right, let's do this. Uh, September 12th, 8.20 a.m. I figured this would be the appropriate one to do first at the last minute. I had something else on my mind that I was thinking about doing, but then when I really sat back and uh, thought about it for a second, gave it a proper thought, considering what my channel used to be for, I think this was the... Uh, this was the appropriate thing to cover first. So this one might run for a while as um, you guys can't see it if you're listening, but I have like a notepad on my main screen, basically with uh, bullet points uh, with everything that I want to cover from the start of uh, when I stopped uploading YouTube videos on Heroes and I actually started streaming it full time. All the way to the point where I stopped. So there's quite a bit on this list. So if this has a long run time, that's why. That being said, the bullet points are also meant to help me stay on track so that I'm not, I don't go on rambling like I am right now. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the format of what this is, I can refer to you my first upload, uh, the idea, everything you need to know is on there. Like I said on there. There will be nothing on the screen. It is literally in my starting soon screen the entire time. So feel free to do whatever you want. If you're listening, you do not need to actively sit there and watch the screen. There will be nothing on the screen. So getting into it, there was basically a time, a while, obviously, because I have like, uh, I think I have something crazy, like over 500 uploads on the channel, technically um between uh the original call of duty stuff that i was uploading which were just uh which were just games basically um at that time i don't think i uh, was as familiar with uh recording like other voices and like all that stuff as i became familiar with it when i started like going full-time on the streaming thing but uh there were some brief uh call of duty uploads that then transitioned into um heroes of the storm uploads when i started really really getting uh, like hardcore about the game and i was really getting into it around beta that was when i discovered it uh to anybody that might be listening to this that that has been around for long enough to know me uh what this next part isn't necessarily news to you guys you've heard me talk about it a million times before essentially i was uh this was when i was in my uh competitive call of duty phase uh, when I used to have a full day uh, working on my game and, and like going through scrims and stuff like that with my team, essentially I'd have like one or two hours at the end of the day where like I'd want to do something else. And that something else for a small period of time was actually League of Legends. And uh, I found that game basically because I saw like the artwork and uh, I thought the characters looked cool and I didn't know what it was. I looked into it, found out what it was, found out it was free to play started trying it out casually i was horrible it was like my first moba ever i was playing it on a touchpad on a laptop so as bad as you're imagining that could be it was that and worse also i am full disclosure i'm the kind of gamer that if i know that i'm bad at something and i know that there's like no realistic time frame for me to actually learn the thing and get better at it me being bad becomes something that i find amusing and it's something that i play into and i become a bit more of a troll than i normally am and uh it, it makes me it gives me enjoyment to know that you know people are upset at me because of how bad i am when i'm in one of those modes but when i flipped the switch and i decided to take something serious though all that goes out the window and then i you know i have proper respect for the game that i'm playing whatever it is yada 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 so uh started getting into one moba saw saw a trailer for for heroes of the storm one random day the the one that takes place in the desert with uh Tyrael, kerrigan arthas diablo and rainer and nova and uh i was like what is this and i was like at the time like i was for years i was like a big diablo 3 fan so uh seeing diablo in the trailer like piqued my interest in Tyrael. And uh, I looked into it, found out what it was. The rest is basically history. Got into it, yada, yada, yada. Skipping to the, to the streaming phase. So essentially, I was actually, if I had to be honest, I would say that I was in the middle of a good thing when I was streaming the game on YouTube because I had, I had a decent amount of people for, for my estimate. You know, like uh, it used to be like between 13 to 15 people that would hang out and, you know, like 
five or six of them would actually be active chatters. So it used to actually be a lot of fun, if I'm being brutally honest, like streaming the game. And I had people who were making time out that they didn't have to, but they would make, they take time out of their day to come hang out. And, you know, we just talk about the video game and it would be a, a cool, fun environment. But with that being said, I kind of convinced myself at some point that it's not something that I would ever get me anywhere so long as I was continuing to stream it on YouTube. That if I wanted to try to get somewhere with it, um, essentially I'd have to go over to Twitch. So that's what I ended up doing. And uh, I'm going to get into it later, what ultimately made me stay on Twitch. But it wasn't as simple as I just went over to Twitch and then it was like uh, I was like locked in and um there was no uh there was no issues with like me staying over there it wasn't like that at all actually i don't think i talked about it much on stream but like uh my best friend knows all about it and like i said i'll get into that stuff uh, a little bit later that's a little later in the bullet points but so where did we start with twitch we started with the clickbait title that essentially got me on the radar and uh i didn't know it at the time I knew it was a clickbait title. I knew it was a damn good one. I didn't realize at the time that it was probably like that was where I peaked. Like I would never come up with a better stream title than I did back then, which for some of you that might be listening right now, you'll know it as soon as I say it. It'll it'll be it'll be a source of laughter like thinking about it now considering all that's happened. And I was in a different state of mind when I came up with the title, too. So that's another thing to factor in. Like, I didn't know. I, I will say it clear as day right now. I didn't know nothing about nothing. I didn't know shit. I was a goldie through and through all the way. There was no denying that. I, I, I would like to think that I was like a little bit smarter than the average gold player, but not by much. I still had the same low elo issue. I didn't realize this at the time, I, but like now I realize it, but at the time I didn't realize it. I had the same low elo issue where I thought I knew more than I actually did. So the clickbait title at the time was GM mind in a gold body. So where I came up with that was like, uh, it was like halfway clickbait, but it was also halfway realistic. It was like my way of saying that I was smarter than the guys in my elo, but I'm still a guy in my elo. So it's like, I wasn't lying necessarily about, um, you know my skill level because people used to i used to get that question a number of times like why why in a gold body oh and i would say because i'm in gold like i have gold mechanics and you know i play like a gold player i don't play any better than that i didn't know at the time there is no such thing obviously like if you're if you can process the game at a higher level mentally you will figure out a way to you know literally play the game better um you know straight up like or physically it sounds weird saying physically because you're not physically doing shit you're just, you know, typing on a keyboard. But I, I don't know. I, like, walked myself into a corner there with that with that one. Anyway. The title worked. The title worked. There was a lot of people. Uh, I, I've, I've almost said this on stream a few times before, and I'm not sure the kind of reaction it would get if people would kind of get offended or if they would quietly agree or if they'd agree out loud. But I want to say that, like... 90 at least 90 percent of the people that found my channel when it was like then 90 percent of the people that found my channel wouldn't have bothered clicking on my stream if it wasn't for that title i like i truly believe that now the title wasn't the reason they stood i'll, I'll say that much because you know i developed a lot of cool a lot of good friend friendships you know streaming the game every day on twitch friendships that i still value but they would have never, none of that would have got kickstarted without the stream title. So, you know, it is what it is. And my, even back then, I still had a, I still had a streak about me or, or a, a code, if you will, where I still felt the need to be somewhat honest. I, I, and then like, I'm a lot more hardcore about that now. And that's, that's, that's what gets me in trouble with people all the time is that I'm, I'm brutally honest. I'm blunt. I don't believe in lying to people. Like, if I have a problem with you, I'm going to say it. I'm not going to just hide it for the, 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 you know, the simple premise of just being polite. You know, I'm not going to be, a, I'm not going to blatantly be an asshole to anybody I don't like. I'm not saying that. But, you know, I'm not going to, like, necessarily, like, put on a false, a false facade or, you know, a mask 
if I if I'm not feeling so if I'm not vibing with a guy, I'm not vibing with a guy. And there'll be a few sidebars actually. Like I have three sidebars bullet pointed right now where uh all three of those are going to be situations where i just wasn't vibing with people and i am going to name names because i want this to be like an accurate assessment of my story of my time trying to stream the game and uh you know it is what it is so you know uh getting back to it my first major lesson moving past the title also i didn't say this at the beginning but uh I'm I'm gonna attempt to look into how to properly um timestamp, that's the word. I'm gonna attempt to look into timestamps before I upload this. Uh you can look down right now and see whether I succeeded in that or not. Hopefully I did. If I didn't, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but at the very least know that at this point in the video i was fully planning to look into time stamping so that if there is something that you wanted to skip to in particular you could just go right ahead and do that hopefully i did it if not feels bad moving along um my first major lesson that i got from a viewer and this will be a topic that i get into uh two 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 topics from now i think or the topic after the next one. I'll get into this a little bit more in a little more detail. But I wanted to highlight one guy. I wanted to highlight one guy that uh, I had a I had a bit of a, a sparring session with um, when I was first when I was first streaming, and it's something that I still value to this day. This one I've talked about on stream a few times, but only a few people were around to hear it. And uh, the minute I say his name, I don't even know if he's listening, if he's gonna be listening to this or not. If he is, cool. He'll know about this as soon as he hears his name. And if not, also cool. No, again, no, no like I said in the idea video, I have no uh, no uh, predetermined outcomes in my mind about who's listening to this stuff and who's not. I'm literally just doing this to, you know, get it off my chest. And this is for, these types of things are for me. So anyway, uh, stop rambling. Uh, this one I wanted to call the Golnar lesson, where essentially... I still remember it uh, like it was yesterday. I was I was still floating around gold. I was like gold one, gold two. This was around the time where Oriel was arguably or arguably the best uh, support in the game, and uh, some of the higher level players were starting to realize that. And uh, you know, it was a it was a fun time if you were an Oriel player. <laughs> And I remembered, uh, I, 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 this was back when I had flexibility. When I was lower elo, I had a different mindset where I tried to, I tried to play um, a bunch of different roles all the time rather than specializing in one. Which I do think, in hindsight, that did play a large part in how long it took for me to eventually get out of low elo. Was that I was trying to do too many things instead of just you know perfecting one or two things specifically with the role even deeper than that with the with the hero pool like a small hero pool you used to i used to hear it all the time from better players a good buddy of mine shig uh used to say that a lot actually um you know small hit there's nothing wrong with small hero pools having things you specialize in it essentially shortens the process of you getting of you getting better at something because you you know you get used to the ups and downs and uh, the upsides and the downsides of, of the whatever characters you're specializing in, you're keeping the load light, which means you have more time to focus on the game itself and then starting to learn that stuff. So I didn't have that mindset back then. Yeah, I played a lot of Sonya games, and Sonya was essentially what put me on the radar too on YouTube. The Sonya videos are the one you can still look now. Actually, I have that one weird. I have that one like. I mean, when I say look, I mean like the 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 views, not so much the videos. The videos, I'm I'm sure the videos have aged poorly, and uh, I wouldn't I couldn't be paid enough money to go back and watch any of them just because now I'm a higher level guy, and just in general, and uh, it would like physically pain me to hear like some of the stuff I thought I knew before as a guy that uh, got to go pretty much where he wanted to go and came back you know but uh the sonya videos were the ones that put me on the map on on youtube those were the ones that got the most traffic 
by far and she was my favorite character she was the reason i installed the game and there were people who thought that was cool that i was more invested in the sonya videos than i was in any of the other videos i had that one weird samuro video that i did that had like crazy amounts of views for you know for my for a channel my size i want to say not crazy views for like a you like a proper good youtube channel that's not what i'm saying like for a, a nobody like me like 1k views was huge 1k views for a nobody is like you know 20 million views for somebody who matters just for context so that's what i mean by like crazy views um but i digress i was known for the sonya videos and i was a, i was a guy that basically jumped from role to role outside of sonya who i played all the time i would jump from role to role and play a bunch of different things so that i you know i, I could i could uh what's the word i could fill so I wouldn't be one of those guys who was a problem. Like, oh, if I don't get my role, if I don't get my hero, then I'm a detriment to the team. And, you know, like, we all know who those guys are. I didn't want to be one of those guys. So getting back to Golnar, I had a game where I was filling and, like, one of the... Uh, I used to have more of a... I used to have more of a tendency of liking Diablo-based healers more than anything because I felt like they were more proactive. And, again, this is at a time where I didn't understand what proactive meant. I thought I knew what it meant, but I clearly didn't. You can be proactive on damn near anything if, you know, you have the mindset and the skill to, and the foresight. You know, there's a lot of things that come with that that I didn't understand until I got to a certain point uh, rank-wise and started playing around, like, a certain kind of skill level with other players. Um, But, yeah, uh, on, a, on an outside perspective, things like Karazim and Oriole and... Uh, I feel like there's a third one that I, uh, maybe there's a third one I, that I can't think of right now. Maybe not. I don't know. But I thought Karazim and Oreo were like, they were really proactive and they had a style that, that required you basically to do offense in order to provide support. So I, I dug that at the time. So like they were the two healers I played the most. And uh, I remember there was a situation again. This was back when Oreo was busted when she had that other level seven talent. I forget what it's called now, but it was a, uh, it was like an instant recharge of energy. Basically, you know, the the idea was that you wanted to pair her with Gul'dan. Gul'dan would fill her bar immediately. She'd have the the heal on a reduced cooldown or something like that, and she could basically spam a full heal like every two to three seconds. Me being a Goldie, I didn't understand how powerful that was. What I saw at the time, and this is going to be a common, I think this is going to be a common theme. If you've made it this far, this is going to be a common theme. I want to take a quick sidebar right now. A common theme in a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about in these kind of videos is um, your ability to listen to what what's being told to you versus the next step in the process of like how you retain that information how you process it and then like the outcome of that so goldar was already at that time like arguably like a master's level guy he saw the game completely differently than from where i did he was telling me what he was telling me from a higher level perspective something that he might as well have been speaking a different language to me as a goldie because i couldn't understand where he was coming from and uh you know he was telling me the value of that level seven talent because i didn't pick it i put what i always 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 used to pick was the and this is a good sign this is actually a really good sign that i don't remember the names of the talents i've been away from the game so long now like this is a sign that it really is out of my system because now i don't remember the name of the talents but i used to always take the seven that essentially uh helped Ariel fill her energy bar more from auto attacking it buffed her auto attacks and uh other things like that so that essentially my 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 idea was that Ariel would be self-dependent she didn't have to worry about having a good teammate in order to provide energy she could be self-sufficient so i saw that as not only a good thing but i saw that as the only thing where golnar was trying to pitch a different angle where if you have a teammate who knows what they're doing you can safely just get your energy back all the time and heal more often than you would the other way where you're working a lot harder to do those similar things not the same thing but similar things it's definitely not the same because again you would be able to get those heals up faster with the other talent and that was the important part so me as a goldie 
and again i ended up realizing he was right about this at the time and i'll get into like the conversation we had because that's the whole point of me bringing this up um but me as a goldie i wasn't trying to hear that like what i what i would see in my games were people that were unreliable so in my mind when i heard him say that i'm like yeah you have the luxury of saying that as a guy who plays around better players who you can rely on you can lean on them to actually do their jobs so yeah it's easy to sit there and pick this other talent because you have you have surefire things playing on you know the battery in gold that surefire thing ain't a surefire thing so i have to work harder for it which to his credit golnar didn't even tell me i was wrong about that where we had a a, a, a clash well we had a clash and and, and I, for the sake of you know honesty i'm gonna say exactly word for word what i what i said that led to the conflict what I said exactly on stream, and this is because I was bold and I was stupid and I didn't know any better, and I thought I knew more than I, than I actually knew. What I said on stream was, anybody who thinks differently doesn't really play Oreo. That was my exact response. There's no world where that response was correct. Literally none. And I didn't realize that when I said it. So this is the other thing too. At the time, Golnar had been coming to the stream uh quite often but he hadn't followed the channel and i think in hindsight when i brought that up to him i think it was just that he thought he already did and didn't realize he didn't i, I i'm not 100 percent on that one like i could ask him about that and he could clar clarify that i think that's what it was so i think he was under the impression that he did follow the channel already and he didn't realize that he didn't so to me he looked like a heckler because every single time he would come to the stream, he was coming as a guy that didn't follow the channel. And every single time he chose to speak, he was grilling me about something or he was critiquing. He was critiquing something that I was doing. Not not in a disrespectful way, by the way, not 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 in any kind of disrespectful way. But again, like I, I had to like this was at a time where I wasn't as uh, thick skinned as I am now. So all I saw was a guy that would just show up basically just to heckle me. And that day I was like, you know, I was basically at my limit with it. It was like the third or fourth time he had came through and was critiquing something that I was doing. So I was like, you know what? Fuck this guy. I, like, I, I don't want to deal with this. And I banned him. And the funny thing is, that could have been the end of it. This is where I got lucky. This is where the story turns. And I got really lucky because he actually messaged me and this was back when i was allowing myself to see what people would message me after i banned them because obviously over the years i've banned many more people for real reasons though and i don't even bother looking at their their messages when uh they message me afterwards because i know it's not going to be anything friendly so it's like why bother? why put myself through the stress but this is around a time where i didn't have that mindset so it's like he sent me a long message asking me what he did to get banned and that's when i finally like spoke out honestly and uh and telling him what i thought he he convinced me that it wasn't anything like that and it was literally just a critique type of thing and when i processed that when i understood that he was coming from a good place i felt so fucking bad about it i felt like horrible like my stomach sank and, and it was like it was hard i was like fuck i really just kind of jumped the gun on this guy and it wasn't even anything malicious or nothing like that and, you know, I, I, I apologize to him, number one. And, uh, you know, he made me understand that just because I saw the game a certain way at my ELO doesn't mean it was the only way to see the game. And that was the other huge takeaway that I, I, I that was the, the other huge lesson that I took away from that, that um, experience that I had with him was that there's more than one way to view any particular situation. You know, like the way you see it isn't the only way it's actually happening which again that will carry on into a lot more stuff that has nothing to do with hots but um yeah man that, that was one of one of my biggest for all the uh support that people for all the support that i've gotten from overly generous people that i i you know i question if i deserve the support to begin with for all the support i've gotten over the years that encounter that i had with uh with golnar and you know him kind of setting me straight i feel like that was one of the biggest blessings i got when i jumped over to twitch and uh 
it's something that I still value to this day, even though I don't play the game anymore. And I don't talk to the guy as much as uh, I used to, obviously, when I played the game. And that's just the nature of the beast. Um, you know, the games are essentially where you find common ground with people. This is something that streamers don't understand. And I'm not going to say content creators. I think content creators are well aware. I think streamers, and not when I say streamers, I mean unsuccessful ones. Or like the ones that are still struggling for success or grinding for success. Or people just starting out. They don't understand that the games themselves are the common ground. They are the middle ground where there's a specific carved out dedicated space where a viewer feels like they can relate to you. Is that you have the interest in the game, the same game that they do. Once you remove that game, a lot of that dynamic is already out of the window. So for the average person, it kind of, it kind of becomes a an awkward situation to continue pursuing because they're not you don't have that common ground with the video game anymore of choice that's why when so that's what that's what's essentially happening every time a streamer decides to go variety or they have a main game where they have like a few hundred people watching them and then they switch to a different game and then all of a sudden they only have like a few dozen people watching them. that's what's happening right there essentially that common ground is being removed and that viewer is basically enacting their right to seek out that common ground with somebody else because there's no rule set in stone saying that they have to stay there and there's a lot of streamers that don't understand that but uh that's a whole nother thing so yeah the golnar thing was was interesting it was something i appreciated i i told him like it was fully up to him if he wanted to come back and give me a second chance after you know i unfairly banned him he did and uh he was one of the most fun guys I, he was one of the guys uh, best players I, I i got the chance to play with i had a lot of fun playing with the guy the player i eventually ended up being uh synergized very well with the player he always was so yeah and, and as far as the player ended up being i'll get into that when i you know get down this line of bullet points but yeah that was uh that was the golden art situation so moving forward okay so i kind of alluded to this uh earlier when i was talking about the move to twitch this one i think will be short this will be very short so uh yeah basically i was kind of struggling at that time like i this is back when i was actually paying attention to my viewer count when i was when i was streaming i was actually paying attention to it bad idea by the way like it's something that i don't do anymore and god knows how long there's no upside that can come from watching your viewer count while you're streaming it's just more stress you don't need in my opinion don't do it but i was making that mistake on a regular basis uh at that time and uh it was to the point where i didn't know i was kind of struggling with should i stay trying to pursue the heroes thing on twitch should i try to go back to youtube and hope that the people that were there come back and maybe you know in a smaller in a smaller less saturated uh uh forum i could be i have a better chance to be seen there was a number of things going through my mind with that what ultimately kept me on twitch was twitch affiliate becoming a thing they introduced the affiliate program and that essentially just kind of made the decision for me like because i this was back this was back when the only way you could have a sub button was if you were partnered and the partner program was still is it was something that looked impossible to actually get into and uh for a guy like me i mean not not for everybody uh some people are just you know better about a lot of things but i digress uh twitch affiliate gave me a very clear-cut avenue that as soon as they as soon as they introduced the program i was in like i met all the requirements uh i think at the time it was like a two or three viewer concurrent 50 followers and uh x amount of x amount of days in a, in a month period i crossed out I, I i met all those requirements of spades and uh i was i was hopeful i was gonna get in and then sure shit like a week after they announced it i got the email and i was like okay i guess this is it i have a sub button that i never thought i would have there's no more uh, there's no room for me to think anymore like this is basically where i'm gonna stay so 
I ended up staying on Twitch the whole time. I'm even still on Twitch now because of the affiliate program because I have that sub button. But that's something maybe I'll get into in a different video altogether. So moving along, like I said, that was going to be a short one. But I felt the need to address why I stood why I stood over there. Moving along to the next one, this is kind of a funny one that I feel like it wouldn't have happened if I would have stayed on YouTube and it happened a thousand percent over because I moved over to Twitch, which was how viewers essentially helped me become better at the game. So one of the downsides to the format that I used to have in uploading videos over and over and over again on YouTube was that essentially I was in a format where I was making videos just giving my opinion my from my point of view on my experiences and sharing them with others and then i would go play the game after i'd upload the video i'd go play the game on my own uh you know i, I want to say off stream even though i wasn't like streaming at the time like that when i was uploading the videos i was just playing on my own time with no uh no audience uh no one uh, critique any of my stuff. No, no, none of that stuff. None of that. Literally none of that. I was just playing by myself and uh, essentially still maintaining an environment where I was having my own experiences with my own opinions and like no outside influence. At the time when I was streaming the game occasionally on YouTube, like I said, I had very cool people watching the stream and active in chat. They weren't like, uh the criticized type of people they were just you know chill individuals who were just hanging out when i went over to twitch that changed and all of a sudden i was getting a mixture of people who were just hanging out and people who were openly critiquing my gameplay and uh it wasn't something that i necessarily had a problem with all the time or anything like that because i i you kind of have to understand that when you stream anything on Twitch or if you stream anything to any kind of audience, you basically present yourself on, on a platform to get destroyed by anybody watching whatever it is that you're, you know, you're putting out there. You basically just feed yourself to the lions by default. And if you don't understand that, you know, off the rip every single time you hit go live, you're never going to make it as a content creator like period you have to understand that, that just that's the nature of the beast and that just comes with the comes with the territory so there was a lot of people who used to come in some people had good intentions others did not and uh that'll be another thing we get into a little bit later in a sidebar the the first sidebar i plan to get into which will be uh a little surprising that i'm actually going to talk about it on a video and uh when i say that i'm naming names with stuff that will be the clear-cut sign that there are there are definitely some stories that i'm going to get into that if uh i asked people who knew about it they might be inclined to tell me yeah don't put that in the video and i don't care i've moved on and it is what it is and i want the story i want my story to be complete as far as like what happened when i left to stream the game on twitch but I digress. There were people who used to stop by the stream with good intentions. People who used to stop by the stream with bad intentions. And uh, for the most part, I paid more attention to when it came to criticisms and stuff like that. And uh, giving me advice, I paid a lot more attention to the good people more than I did the bad people. And, um, you know, it was something that over time, the more I did it, the the better I got at the game. And it was like, uh, it was something that I didn't really sit back to like uh, process or think about until like I was around Diamond. And uh, I realized there was a lot of things that I picked up. I would have never picked up any of this stuff had I just been playing alone. I, I, I genuinely believe if I would have continued playing alone, I would have topped out at low plat. Because, like, when I first, and I guess this is kind of bleeding in. So, I had it written out where I was going to talk about how viewers essentially helped me become better at the game. And then, um, uh, the bullet point after that was basically, uh, when I finally started progressing and hitting higher ranks, like, season by season by season. So, I'm going to bleed, I'm going to merge these into one thing now because they're kind of, they kind of go hand in hand. 
one didn't happen without the other so like viewers giving me advice and you know telling me things that i wouldn't think about on my own those all kind of added up combined with like me watching replays and uh you know watching my own streams and, and watching my gameplays there it was a lot of small things that resulted in me season by season by season going up like one rank every single season like you were seeing the, the the steady progression every single season it didn't always play out like that on stream obviously because i was the kind of player that i always had i always had like a lot of like ups and downs it was always like an ebb and flow with me I'd, I'd win a bunch of games jump up a rank or two then lose a bunch of games jump down three ranks maybe four and then at the end of the season figure something out or whatever or turn it back around and you basically end up back to close where close to where i started that was the kind of guy i was like a wave basically it was just it is what it is and um i still remember what it felt like when i first when i finally broke down the door and i finally got into plat and i was plat five and i had put so much pressure on myself at that time because the thing the thing about struggling and being hard stuck in a rank and this is something that good players don't really ever experience, so they don't know anything about it. The thing about being hard stuck in a rank is that when you finally when you finally get over that wall and you know you get to that next territory that you're trying to get to, that you you feel like you worked hard, you worked your ass off and busted your ass to get there. You can't help it, but in most cases, the first thing you immediately think of is how easily you could end up falling back into the area that you are hard stuck in so instead of focusing on improving your game and working hard and you know doing the right things you essentially jump into a new territory and you're 100 percent focused on not losing what you just got which is not how you got where you got to begin with that was a lot of times that i said got um but yeah, I remember getting to plat five and like getting midway through plat five. Like if you remember the structure of Heroes of the Storm, they used to have that ring. You needed a thousand points to jump from from division to division. And you'd see that little ring fill up, two hundred points per win, two hundred points per loss. Uh so it's like my mindset at the time was you're not really the next rank because this is the other thing Cir slow for like briefly circling back to the clickbait title i remember people were putting pressure on me in the chat too when i finally did get to plat and they were like okay time to change the stream title gm mind and a plat body and i was like no because my mindset at the time was you're not really the the next rank until you get to division four if you get to division four then it counts it's legit it actually counts it means that you getting there wasn't a fluke because you were still able to continue winning and then really get your foot in the door and get and like carve out a space for yourself so if you were like uh if you were silver five you were still bronze one if you were gold five you were still silver one if you were plat five you were still gold one if you were diamond five you were still plat one if you were masters like zero to 100 or zero to 1k you were still diamond one etc cetera, etc cetera. there's no official rule by the way stating that this is literally just how my mind processed it that's what i'm saying like this is how i thought about it so i remember getting pressure to change the stream title and i never did it i, I refused to do it because i felt like if i did it and then i fell back down to gold the stream title was embarrassing i never wanted to put myself in a position to be seen as a lie i was like that intensive and hardcore about that i did not want to be seen as a liar anywhere on, on like on any level so that was like a an, an instant no for me like nah not until we at least hit plat four so at least if i hit if i have a losing stream technically speaking for most of the losing stream i'm still plat so the stream title will be a complete lie but um yeah i remember it feeling like i feel like plat was basically where i hit my ceiling as like just my own my own judge and my own my own uh criticizer if you will my own coach and uh the viewers were essentially the ones that that guided me the rest of the way
uh at least through diamond because i think it i think i was like my own man from my own player from gold to plat then i was kind of like a a player of the people like i kind of listened to everybody to get me from plat to diamond and then when i i, I hit a wall like mid diamond i started watching uh I started really paying attention to like uh better players when they were streaming and like watching their games a little differently that was when i i I shifted out of the play all roles mindset and i shifted into the become a specialist mindset which i'll get into that you know that's another bullet point to get into down the line uh the tank phase basically uh but yeah, I want to say that the first leg was me being my own guy. Second leg was me listening to other people, outside influence. And then the final leg that, that got me to where I wanted to get was a mixture of both. It went kind of back to me being my own man, but still selectively listening to specific people while doing that. And that was what eventually got me over the hump and finally, finally, finally got me into Masters because that was a long process in and of itself. It was like a running joke basically every season was like if i had like one stream where i won like five games in a row at diamond five i'd have like four assholes in my fucking chat saying oh like papa masters when and blah 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 it's like bro there's four more divisions that i have to climb through and a whole lot that can go wrong on the way through please stop and this is kind of a problem i had with the the hero's culture as a whole was you know the gaslighting and you know fake hype and uh essentially fake friendships i feel like that could be another one that i could i could do i could do a video about that all all on its own so i'm not going to get into that type of stuff here um but yeah people used to try to like hype up a lot of a lot, a lot of nothing and i saw through that shit all the time so i never really gave like bought into it but um yeah it, it's staying on track it's something that I think about where it's like I would have got I would have had none of those experiences. I think I would have still I would have quite possibly still been hard stuck plat if uh I was still playing by myself and not like really you know assessing the terrain and listening to uh better players and you know same level players and worse players. If I wasn't just taking it all in and uh you know listening to what people had to say. Again, that's going to be a common theme with basically everything that I put out. Okay. Taking a deep breath here. Uh, let me hang on a second. Uh, again, if you're still here listening to me ramble about this shit, I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, take a little drink here before I get into the first sidebar where this video takes a turn and gets really interesting. All right. So, sidebar number one. An individual we like to refer to as GGG. So, to give the important part about this, it was basically a five stack of, uh, of friends or whatever. And, uh, I can't confirm this or not, but like hearing them on other, hearing them talk to each other on other people's streams, it actually used to sound like they were five dudes all in the same room. Like you could hear them on each other's mics, like high fiving and stuff. Like it was like they were playing at a LAN, which I'm not judging. There's nothing wrong with that. If you have a, if you have any kind of environment where you like, you have your best friends and you're all playing together in the same, that's awesome. That's fucking dope. I'm not critiquing that at all. Um, but yeah, it was five dudes. Emphasis on dudes. Men. Males. Uh, X and Y chromosomes. You know, uh, dick and balls. Five dudes. That would uh, only play the game together. And essentially, they were like a booster squad. And uh, the person who used to be on the GGG account was basically the main beneficiary of the whole uh, scheme. Uh, they used to run the same, the same team comp basically all the time. I think it was uh, it was always the GGG on the Nova, 
who was always number one on the the GM leaderboard when they were doing this bullshit. Uh, and I'll explain what they were doing to get the the dude there uh, in a minute. It used to be Nova, Murky, Hammer, uh, Lucio, and ETC. That's who their five were. And uh, the whole idea was basically that when they hit a certain uh, point in the matchmaking, in the ranking, four of them would essentially make brand new accounts and then party up with the, the, the Nova player so that the skill level of the games they were finding, and at the time, this was, this was abusable. The skill level of the games they were finding would be lowered so that they never had to worry about playing against actual good players. But then the GGG account could still continue getting continue getting points and climbing the leaderboard. So every single time, essentially, they would get to low diamond, I want to say, on those four accounts. They would basically, all four guys, would jump back on new accounts and start the whole process all over again, be it from silver or gold, and then they would boost the, the, the master's account into GM, eventually to GM number one. And uh, the, win way, the win rate would be something like utterly ridiculous on it. Anybody that actually watched these guys play knew they weren't really that good at the game. I would still argue to this day. I said it back then. I would still argue to this day it's the case now. I think they only had like one legitimate, like one good player. Not like a crazy player or anything like that. But I think they had one good player who was basically doing all of the work from his end. And then the other four were basically in the backpack. And that was Shen on the uh, on the murky. He was the one guy that I thought, to some degree, genuinely knew what he was doing. But, like, he was... I don't want to make it seem like he was a good person in a bad situation. Because he was kind of a piece of shit, too. For different reasons involving, like, uh... From what I heard, like, basically streaming scrims, like, before uh, an actual tournament. Which, you know gentlemen's rules gentlemen's agreements with that kind of stuff it's it's a douchebag move it, it, it's a full-on douchebag move especially when you know that you're not going to be in a situation where you, if you know you're going to be in a situation in a real tournament you're going to get bumped because you suck like streaming another team who does have a chance to win and showing off their strats and shit it, it, it's low it, 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 there's no class in that but that's another thing so yeah that was just one part of it where it was like four guys boosting a fifth guy emphasis on guy and uh maybe i should get into why i'm i'm going out of my way to stress that these were five males five uh boys i'm actually like doing an injustice by calling them men because they're not um but these were five boys who were going around they had this weird story they used to try to pitch and throw around where they would say that the ggg player was actually a girl and was a model and was rich and uh she came from like the fighting game community and uh she used to win tournaments all over the place and uh was bored bored with air quotes because she was bored for fun, she decided to jump into Heroes of the Storm to see if she could do the same thing in a MOBA. Mind you, if this was a real person and this story was absolutely real and they actually were successful and bored and looking to challenge themselves, I highly doubt that the MOBA of choice would be the not most popular one. A real person under those real circumstances that was looking for a real challenge would go to League of Legends. That was the most popular one, or dare I say Dota 2, which is the hardest one. You'd go to either one of those and see what happens. You wouldn't go to the fucking bottom of the barrel, like the 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 very last one on the list that 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 was somewhat successful. Wouldn't happen. If if you made a name for yourself on Heroes, who would know about it? Nobody. There's literally nobody anywhere in the game at any point in time that is actually known anywhere of relevance outside of the game itself. Not a single one. I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. 
if they're telling themselves any this is me circling back to my past but this time i actually mean it and this time i'm not wrong if anybody thinks that there's a single player who's actually relevant from playing heroes outside of heroes itself they're lying to themselves they're absolutely lying to themselves there was maybe one guy who took his best shot i want to say there was one guy who took his best shot i can't remember his goddamn name but he used to play for cloud nine and uh i think he was like the shot caller before they handed it off to fan he took his stab at, at Fortnite, and i think he placed second in like one tournament and then he fell off the face of the earth after that. And even when he played second, you didn't hear about that shit anywhere. You know where you heard about it from people who were still keeping track of his ass from heroes. So there is no world that exists where you have popularity from this game and then it carries over outside of the game. So the whole premise of their story, it doesn't make any sense from the onset. I digress. There was one random day where I didn't realize I was walking into essentially a trap situation. And uh, I walked onto a landmine while I was live streaming and didn't realize it until it was too late. And uh, at the time, I'm not even going to lie, at the time when I got out of that stream, or, you know, maybe I should just talk about the stream itself before... I talk about how I processed it afterwards. Let me, let me do this correctly. So I jumped into a call with, uh, or not a call. It wasn't a call. This was a voice. This is voice chat in the game. Cause you know, for all the things that heroes of the storm does wrong, voice chat is absolutely not one of them. The voice chat, it, it's, it's a fucking voice chat. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it works. That's the important thing. It fucking works. It's simple to use. Comms are clear. People don't really drop out like that often. It's the one part of the game that works the way it's supposed to work. So anyway, I jump into team chat with, uh, I didn't realize, I think it was like three of the guys. I think it was three of them from the booster squad. I didn't realize that they were, they were who they were when I jumped in. And one of them basically tried to blindside me, asking me a bunch of questions about losing a game to GGG. He even made up some fake ass stat where, you know, uh, the player went like 18 and one specifically just against me and like nobody else, just me, you know, because I was the target. And I remembered at the time, like I paused when I heard that and I was like, where did you hear that? And he said some stupid ass shit like, oh, I'm looking at the stats right here and I could see it, blah, blah, blah. Or I have a video with like thousands of thousands of views posted on YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Never provided a link, by the way, because the video doesn't exist. Smile. Um, but I was completely blindsided. I didn't know what I was walking into until it was like too late. He even went into some spiel at one time, like, oh, I just texted her now and uh, she says she has no problem with you and blah. But this is when they were still saying it was a girl. I didn't even get into that part. Why the, the Why I keep emphasizing that it was five dudes. I'll get into that after this, but um, that we played, I played like two or three games with these guys. They were, they, they put on some bullshit act. Like they were asking me a bunch of questions. Like they were doing a live interview or something like that. I actually answered all of their questions and I was actually, for the most part, I was very civil with these guys. And I don't think that's what they were expecting. This is where I get into like how I processed it after the fact. Because by the time I got out of there and I ended my stream, I ended my stream right away as soon as I got out because I thought, like, my first thought was, holy shit, I just fucked up. These guys are going to make me look, like, horrible or blah, blah, blah. Then I really, I like, when I stopped being emotional about it and I really started to think about it, I was like, wait, no. There's, like, literally nothing they can do with this because I handled myself with class and accordingly. And I didn't acknowledge anything that they said, like at all. Anything that they said that happened to me, I was like, non, I didn't confirm anything or deny anything. I was like, uh, just kind of in the middle, just kind of surprised by the accusations or whatever they were trying to throw. But again, not like confirming or denying anything, just kind of like, okay, sure, if you say so. 
and then just kind of like brushing past it and then like every single question they asked me i responded in a friendly manner and not combative or or um aggressive at all it was the exact opposite and that's when i realized afterwards these dudes were to legitimately looking to get a reaction out of me by blindsiding me the way that they did thank god my natural instinct wasn't to give them exactly that and they essentially came away with nothing and when i realized that i didn't have any kind of stress whatsoever and it was like yo if anything if anybody was watching this they look bad not me so you know it is what it is it's all good they, like before i got off of that call they were talking about like you know like grouping up again and stuff like that that never happened and, it, and like i had no conceptions about doing it again anyway because i realized who they were after the fact so let's getting into the funny part the, the 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 funny part of why we keep emphasizing you know the gender with these individuals remember the story i said that they they were saying the ggg person was a girl a model they said a rich model who had success winning fgc tournaments blah 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 come to find out uh a viewer at the time uh viewer named xerius he actually found clipped and posted an exact clip of the exact guy on that exact account the ggg account and it was some fat dude wearing a mask in like a fucking weird ass room with like red lighting or some shit like that or green lighting one or the other it looked like a fucking dungeon in there and he was wearing a stupid ass mask covering his face and you could see it clear as day he was playing on the ggg account and i was like okay this is fucking hilarious and then sometime after they realized xerius outed the guy they went back and they deleted the clip so that he couldn't post it anymore and then like sure as shit overnight the whole booster squad just stopped being a thing overall and that problem kind of took care of itself so the, yeah five dudes five dudes going around making up a story about a girl for reasons i can't even begin to comprehend it's fucking sad and you know good riddance also worth mentioning that uh there was a streamer this is like a sidebar to a sidebar because it's, it's it's on my mind right now that's supposed to be the point of these videos sidebar to a sidebar there was another streamer arguably somewhat successful hero streamer which is not the same as a successful streamer period um but it was a guy that was known on the hero scene named trixler he used to cast uh esports games i think that's what he was mo mostly known for at the time I had a random day where I showed up on his stream and uh, I used to lurk over there quite a bit because I thought he was a he was an entertaining streamer to watch. There's actually a number of guys I might talk about today on this on this video who I f genuinely found entertaining to watch that maybe I just didn't have the greatest relationship with them <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Looking at my next sidebar, that is literally what that sidebar is. It's a situation with a streamer a gm streamer who i found entertaining to watch but my first uh my first encounter with the guy was a bad one and it basically set a dynamic where uh we would always be on opposing sides and it was actually ultimately over nothing um and i say this laughing now but it wasn't really a laughing matter then uh I'm speaking from a place where it's like I'm over all of this shit, so that's why I'm kind of laughing about it. Um, anyway. Uh, quick side of Trixler. So I go into this guy's stream one day. Uh, I typically lurk. So when I... Fun fact, when I lurk on a stream, I actually keep the chat closed when I lurk on stream. So I'm actually just watching the gameplay or I have it on in the background when I'm playing another game on, on my Xbox. And I just leave the stream on as background noise and occasionally look over. <sighs> Something to remember for the second sidebar story. I don't remember what it was, but uh, he said some... Trixler said something on a stream that prompted me to open up his chat to attempt to 
type at him. Only when I opened up the chat, I saw this nice little message waiting for me saying, you have been permanently banned from this guy's stream. And I was sitting there like, wait, what? <laughs> like, how? Like, I've never, ever said anything in this guy's chat before. Ever. I've never said anything directly to him before either. I'm banned? And it was something that was like, all right, you know, for months, I was like, fuck this guy then, if I'm banned. And I assumed that, you know, all of his buddies all around him at the time probably had me banned too or had some negative uh, opinion about me as a person as a result because, you know, it was a small community. So it's like, if you're on one person's radar, you're basically on everybody's radar because that, that's, again, that's a, that, that's a whole different video I could do about the culture. Let me not fucking do that here. So... Yeah, for the longest time, it was basically like, you know, fuck this guy. He banned me. I didn't do anything. And I got banned. He could eat a dick. Um, Full disclosure, I'm not in a place where, you know, I take any of that back. So, you know, I, I can't confirm. I'm about to say what I think the reason is why I got banned. I can't confirm why I got banned. So until I can confirm why I got banned, not that I ever care to confirm it. So basically, for the rest of time, my opinion and my official stance on Trixler is still, fuck that guy, he could eat a dick. Um, just so we're clear. Anyway, at a later time, months later, I, I thought back, I don't know what made me think about it. And there's a reason I'm, I'm bringing this up now with the GGG segment. Um, there was a, a random day where I saw an attempt to slander me on the subreddit from an account from one of the booster squad dudes don't know who it was because obviously the only people i know of was the guy that was getting boosted <clears throat> excuse me the guy that was getting boosted uh and uh, the murky main who that was a weird dynamic too because he was so he would appear to be one guy you know behind the scenes but then, like, when you actually talk to him, he's completely civil. He's a, nice, he's, he's a nice dude. Like, you could have a conversation with him. Dare I say he was even fun to speak to and fun to play games with, you know? But he becomes a completely different guy when he's behind a chat or something. Or, or like, when you can't see him in a public space, he's two-faced. And it's something that, like damn near everybody says about the guy it's not it's not even this is not my opinion this is literally what you hear from everybody who comments on the guy is that he's two-faced he's shady he's a completely different guy the only reason why i don't really like look into it is because i never had a problem with the guy myself he never you know if we're if we're talking officially he never had a situation where he came up to me and he was disrespectful. So I never had any means. I never had any desire or need to ever be disrespectful towards him. It was always civil. Every time I spoke to the guy, for the most part, it was always civil. I eventually hit a point where I was like, you know what? I eventually hit a point where when he would show up, I felt like there was an agenda going on with why he was there. So I just stopped acknowledging him because I felt like he, was, he wasn't there for the right reason. That was ultimately where I ended up being mentally. It was like I stopped talking to people who I felt like they didn't have good intentions with being around or they didn't have good intentions with like interacting with me. I just wouldn't give them the time of day anymore. Uh, I could be wrong about that, by the way. I could be completely wrong. And he could have genuinely been friendly, you know, for the sake of being friendly. I don't know. I've moved on. So it's like I don't even care. Um, Where was I? Oh, the slander, the, the subreddit. So I saw this this post from an account whose literal name was Papa Awiz Sucks. <laughs> the account name was literally Papa Awiz Sucks. And they posted a clip from the channel of me playing with four viewers who were just buddies. They were just friends. And they were all lower ranked than me. And this was kind this was something that I used to do because I used to go against the grain. So one thing when I was starting to hit that point where I had to make a decision, and this is a decision that I saw 
I saw Shig make essentially. And uh I don't think I don't think Shig will care about me saying this out loud, but if he does, I apologize. Uh if he's listening. Or if somebody else is listening and they attempt to like, you know, twist my words here. I was hitting a point basically where uh Shig straight up told me in a DM that I had to make a decision about what kind of player I wanted to be. Because if anybody understood how serious I was about making it to Masters, it was that guy. I got, like, he had already done it, like, season after season after season. He was on the, the next level after Masters. And uh, he told me that I had to make a decision between do I actually want to pursue Masters and be a guy that, like, uh, actually fully commits, meaning, you know, you stop this bullshit where you play with the viewers in games that count, and you get held back basically by people who aren't ready for those level of games or do you continue doing the nice guy thing and playing with viewers and then your rank kind of suffers for it and in hindsight he was absolutely right they i have no i have no doubt in my mind that i would have made it to masters like whole seasons faster than i ended up actually getting there uh, and for people, if anybody from the old YouTube era where I was uploading videos as a Goldie, if any of you are actually here listening to all of this, but, but you know, big respect, if any of you are here, love you guys to death. Secondly, I did end up making it. Uh, we did get there. That was the goal. We actually got there. It was, it was, it was an experience. Um, getting back on track. Um... He basically painted a clear picture for me that I had to make a decision, and my decision at the time was, I don't want to say it was the wrong one, but for the goal that I had in mind, it was the wrong one. So I decided, I was like, you know, I wanted to go against the green, because that's the kind of guy I am. If somebody tells me that there's a specific way to do things, and it also happens to be like the popular way to do things, ergo appears to be the only way to do things, I tend to go against the grain and say, I'm going to find my own way. Am I always successful in doing that? Fuck no. Hell no. Not even close. But there are occasions where I do, to some degree, succeed in figuring out a way to do something challenging in my own way. And, uh, you know, hitting Masters was no exception. I didn't do it playing with viewers, though, that were lower level. I did eventually realize that I needed to stop doing that. But I realized they're kind of late, but I digress. Getting back to the to the Reddit story. The guy took a screenshot, or he took a clip of me playing with four viewers. And uh, it was, uh, trying to remember. I remember two people it was, at least. I remember Viking was there, and I remembered um, Killman was there. I don't remember who the other two were, but it was basically just a bunch of plats and a bunch of golds. And uh, guys that weren't playing the game enough on their own or, like, playing it serious enough or working on their game enough, if I'm being quite honest. Guys that just weren't playing the game in a means, in a manner where they were looking to improve. So, essentially, I was looking to improve at all times. And I was playing in an environment around guys who only wanted to play when I was playing. So, it was just a recipe for disaster. And uh, one of the booster boys posted uh, a clip on the subreddit and was like, look at this guy attempting. It's, it's ironic that he said this, considering who he was. He was like, oh, look at, look at Awiz playing with lower ranks, trying to boost him. And the reason why I'm bringing the story up to go come full circle is that none other than Trixler himself commented on that post on that subreddit saying it is what it is there's nothing we can do about it until next season next season these guys won't be able to do that this is before they 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 put the changes that eventually led to ggg going away um so i didn't think nothing of it i was like okay well he commented he's wrong i'm not boosting at all i'm playing with friends and there's one person i, I don't know this person's name there's one person that I at least want to be on the record to give them credit. There was one person who saw the post 
went back into my VODs, God bless their heart. They went back into the VOD and watched the stream. And then they came back to the subreddit and were like, yo, just watched it. It literally seems like he's just playing with his friends, not looking to get boosted. I don't know. God bless that dude or, or a girl. They're the real fucking MVP. They're the real homie. Appreciate the hell out of you for actually taking the time to see what it was for yourself. So anyway, months go by, months go by, months go by, months go by, months go by. I'm still sitting around thinking about it. I have a random day where I'm thinking about the. I told somebody about me being banned in Trickster Stream and we got a good laugh about it. I was like, well, how the fuck does that happen? And then all of a sudden I had a thought. I had an epiphany that maybe, just maybe, there was a connection there. <laughs> maybe Trixler saw that post, saw my name, realized I was on Twitch, believed the slander, the attempted slander, thought I was a booster and preemptively just banned me from his chat in case I ever showed up. Because again, small community, everybody's like, pumping elbows with everybody you end up learning who everybody is eventually if you're streaming that game long enough or that's the way it was then i don't know about now um so yeah in hindsight i think he actually banned me from his stream because he thought i was a booster which is fucking hilarious considering that i was accused by a booster but yeah uh <laughs> crazy crazy fucking experiences that was just the first sidebar so uh the next two i promise are going to be equally as interesting if not more interesting so i want to get to a small part honest to god i gotta fucking piss like a madman so i might there if i did decide to do timestamps and there's one literally saying a stepped away to take a leak that's why you could just feel free to skip that one because i'm kind of feeling the urge right now and i'm trying to fight it and I still got like half a page left of shit to get into. Don't know how long they're going to take. I feel like the sidebars are going to end up being the stuff that I take the longest on. But they're also going to be like the most interesting stuff in this video. Uh, as a viewer, if you're if you're listening to this, that is. But yeah, so I basically went through a phase getting back on track with the story. I spent a long time in Diamond, hard stuck. Long, 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 long time. Technically, if you looked at my, my, my profile... It would still see the seasonal progression one one rank at a time but i did man that shit felt like it lasted forever i thought i was never gonna make it i was topping out at like d2 d1 felt like the hardest thing i'd ever i'd ever experienced and uh you know it just was looking grim then eventually uh eventually we got over the hump and uh we we had a little bit of help but we had a little bit of help initially getting over the hump. And this was like when they, they enabled like at parties to play together against uh, solo queues. But I was, there was no, nobody in their right mind could deny that I was a vital part of the group that we ended up playing with around that time. Or at least the day that we finally knocked down that, that, that wall and we finally hit masters. And, uh, I think that was when I had made the transition fully and I was actually just tanking every game. That was what got me over the hump was that I, I started specializing in main tank more than anything. And I learned how to play the game up front. And uh, as a result, I was able to understand how people were playing the game everywhere else or how they were supposed to be playing the game, which is another segment, another bullet point I plan to get into uh, a little bit later. Uh, I have no idea how long this video is running or how long it's going to run. But like I said, I said at the beginning, this is going to be a long one because I wanted to cover everything that I could think of. So, or everything that I could think of that mattered to me. So, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> it's going to be interesting when I listen to this back on my own. Because uh, I don't know when I'm going to upload this from like when I recorded it. Uh, it's going to be interesting to listen to. I'm going to step away. I'm going to take that leak. So this is probably, if I did end up putting timestamps, this was the part that forced me to look into timestamps and do it the right way because I would feel bad about this being unedited and stepping away during a live recording. But since I have timestamps, I'm not going to feel bad because you could just look at the bar and skip this and, uh, you know, come right back to the exact moment. Or if you really want to be fucking weird, 
you can just go take a leak yourself now while I do the same thing too. I won't judge either way. But yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Took us a swig of water. And, uh, yeah, apologies for that. <laughs> so, I didn't think this was video was going to play out the way that it's about to play out, but it seems like we're going to jump from one sidebar to the next sidebar because I really don't have much to say more about the uh, long period that I went through waiting to get to masters that was a bullet point i thought i was gonna have more to say on it when i wrote it down in my notepad but uh yeah no there's not really much to say about that it was a long wait i was hard stuck diamond for a while and you know the world keeps turning so getting into uh sidebar number two <laughs> and i'm already laughing thinking about this one because this was a situation that uh it could have easily been avoided and uh um you know it wasn't <laughs> and it's fucking stupid but uh it happened and it's part of the story i do think that it, there were implications from this interaction that i had with this individual that uh played out in ways that weren't intended in any way by this 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 person I do think that it did that some of that might have bled over into like uh um my last years on the game and like some of the griefing that was going on with that. But again, I don't think that was anything intended by the person I'm about to talk about. I'm not putting that on him in any way whatsoever. Not his fault. If it is something that was like a blowback of me calling him out, it was that's purely my fault, not his. Uh just for the record. So, I remembered I, uh, I, I was on stream, I wasn't streaming myself, but I was playing with, with, uh, my friend Shig, and we were duo queued, and, uh, I wasn't actually streaming myself, so, typically what happens is when I'm on somebody else's stream, but I'm not streaming, I try to be mindful about what I'm saying, and this is something that I'm bringing up now because this was kind of a misread on this individual's part. He could, he completely misread this as meaning something that it didn't. I try to be mindful of everything that I say when I'm on somebody else's stream and I'm not streaming myself because I don't want my views to reflect on the streamer. 
So essentially, if I'm playing with a guy like Shig, he has his own environment and his own kind of uh, culture and his own uh, dynamic with his viewers. That's not a one to one comparison of like what my dynamic and my my uh, environment is with my viewers or the viewers I used to have. They're not the same thing. So essentially, I have it pre-written in my mind that I can't be the same exact guy on somebody else's stream that I'm going to be on my stream. If like specifically, if I'm not streaming at the moment, then me being kind of like an asshole or something is inconsiderate to the streamer because technically I'm not live and they are. So my actions might not have any immediate effect on my product where it will have an immediate effect on his product. If you're following what I'm saying. So I don't know how it came up, but uh, some somehow a conversation started coming on, coming around about Leon black, who was a GM streamer. He was like, uh, he was like the most relevant, like tank main at that time. He used to average like 500 viewers at the time easily. And, uh, around that time I had been following his channel for a little while. Not like a, not like a long time. Cause I, the way I found the guy was on a random day. I think somebody hosted him or something, or it might've been a day that I was just going through the, uh, through the directory. He was one of the, the top guys up there that day. It was early in the morning too. Uh, cause he's on West coast time. So he naturally ends up streaming at times where like people on the East coast are just waking up. And, uh, that was the case that day. And I thought it was a chill stream to watch initially the first time, first few times I watched it, so I followed and uh i want to say i was following for a few months when this specific encounter happened where you know two two <laughs> two paths crossed <laughs> and uh i was uh i was also a tank main at the time but a, an irrelevant one unlike him like i said he was the guy averaging 500 viewers he was gm every single season he was a legitimate gm not a boosted one or a fake one he, he was legit. He was a damn good player. Still is right now, actually. Um, but his attitude wasn't the greatest. And uh, I was kind of saying that uh, I was kind of putting that out there like out loud while he was in the chat or whatever. And apparently this is just a thing that he likes to do. Like, I guess this is kind of like a masochist kind of streak about him where he likes hanging around places where people talk shit about him. And uh, he spoke out. And uh, I saw him comment in the in the chat, and I had like a, a, a funny reaction to it. I was like, "Oh, look at that! He's right there." So this is the part, and this is I this was I want to say this. This was around a time where I had the wrong idea about the guy. I completely had the wrong. This is why I say that this was avoidable. So you know what? Let me put this out there now. From a few bad experiences that I witnessed as a viewer with him dealing with other people, I had this misconception that he was essentially just a bully and that he would basically just go around putting people down and I'm not about that shit. I don't like when anybody does that, like period. I don't give a fuck who they are. So I had the wrong idea about him from the onset and I had, in hindsight, I didn't bother to ask around about I mean, I didn't really care, but I didn't ask you know, make people who actually knew the guy or had a conversation with the guy, what kind of person he was. I just kind of assumed he was an, he like, he was an asshole, which he is an asshole. I'm an asshole. We're all assholes, but he's not a piece of shit. I thought he was a complete piece of shit, a complete douchebag who would just go around putting people down just to amuse himself. And that was kind of how I saw him around his friends too, specifically, uh, one dude that it was uh, like a part of his main crew. I, I don't remember his name now. Uh, pirate. That's what, something like P rat or something like that. He seemed like uh, like the prototypical beta who just kind of gets made fun of the whole time and just kind of allows it to happen. Honestly, a lot of the guys around Leon kind of seemed like that where they were either like mopey or depressed or, you know, they just kind of like, take this guy's shit and, you know, never fire back. I'm not saying that's the dynamic they actually have. I'm saying this is the, this is the, 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 the image I had 
watching from the outside. Um, I don't actually believe that that's how it is with those guys at all. Realistically, I don't think that's the exact friendship they have anywhere near it. I think I just literally had the wrong idea the whole time. So I was speaking freely about how I thought he was a douchebag while he was in the chat. He comes out, he says something and, uh, what should we call? Because I think I, what it was is that I realized that I wasn't on stream, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just throwing this guy under the bus right now." Shig's the one streaming, so if this gets around, it's gonna look bad on Shig. So I should stop. So I was attempting to stop, and that's when Leon came out and he challenged me to say the rest of what I was gonna say. So you know, I was like, "Okay, game on." Like, I'm not gonna be one of these other guys who like fucking falls into a hole whenever he shows up the big bad bully shows up and now all of a sudden i take back what i said this is the part where he kind of gets it wrong and and i i say this because i was still watching his streams like after this happened and there were three occasions i'm almost positive it was at least three occasions where i was lurking on his stream that he talked about this and to give him credit he didn't name names and some moron out there might hear that and be like, how are you giving him credit for not naming names? Like, that's a bitch move. Blah, blah. No, 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 no. He was absolutely respectful in not saying my name to his 500 to 1,000 people who were watching and whatever. In a small environment like the Heroes community, if he would have named me directly, it could have, like, completely, like, shattered my channel. It was actually the same thing... Uh, the same thing, I was in a position for the same thing to happen this one time that I played with another streamer named Salinity, where uh, we had a random game, we lost, uh, I think me and her were the only ones that played well, but she completely threw me under the bus and put the entire game, I didn't watch the stream, I didn't watch it for myself, I didn't go see, because I was, I was a fan, so I was like, I didn't want to like go in and see her throwing me under the bus and like tearing me a new one, but there are people over there who watched her streams that are my friends too they were the ones who came over there was like three or four different people who came over like bro she is tearing into you right now and my first thought was i can't say anything back i can't defend myself because the minute i try to defend myself i'm gonna have like 400 white knights coming to my stream and harassing me because i'm saying something back to their favorite streamer so I'm in a position where I'm completely defenseless. Like my only defense is to stay quiet and just let it happen. So when I say that Leon did me a solid in not naming me, that's what I mean. That's where I'm coming from. He didn't name me at all the three times I heard him speak about it, where, you know, if his viewers were toxic, they could have said, fuck this guy, fuck Awiz. And they could have just showed up to my stream one day and just harassed me the whole time. I'm not saying those are the kind of viewers he has. I'm just saying I'm speaking theoretically. A lot of what I'm saying with this stuff is theoretically. So I actually appreciate that he didn't name me when he was talking about the stories. But again, he kind of told the story inaccurate. So the way he would tell it was basically that he called, he heard me talking shit and I, I like, I clearly didn't like him. And then he, he came out of his hole. He challenged me to say something. And then I basically didn't say anything else. All I said was that I, I respected him as a player. That's not necessarily fully true. What actually happened was I wanted to distinguish that what I thought of him as a person was not what I thought of him as a player. Because I did actually say that I respected him as a player. That's not all I said. And, you know, I thought it was funny because it's like it's his stream, it's his platform. He could tell the story however he wants. That's his right. It's literally his right. If he wants to make me look bad, he can make me look bad. And it is what it is. And, uh, you know, he would basically make it seem like I kind of like backed out or whatever at the last second and went from like throwing him under the bus to just saying, oh, I respect him. And then I left it. At, no, 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 no. That's not what happened at all. I specifically went out of my way to because initially I was like, you know what? I don't want to say what I'm going to say. This is the first thing he got wrong. He thought that I, I stopped what I was saying because it was going to be something, some horrendous thing, or I was going to say some hardcore shit that he could not come back from or, or something really mean spirit. No, not at all. Nothing like that. I didn't hate the guy like that. I don't think I hate anybody like that. No, I was trying to pull back because I realized that I was running my mouth and it wasn't on my stream. If he would have been around at the same time while I was streaming, that wouldn't have happened. 
I would have just kept talking freely and said, fuck it. Because, you know, I'm doing so only at a risk to my platform, not another guy's platform and another guy that I view as a friend. That was literally all that was. He processed it as, oh, he was attempting to pull back because he was going to say something crazy. And then when he actually did say something, it wasn't even that bad. So, like, why did he pull back to begin with? Everybody gets stuff wrong. We're all human beings. So that was just a slight misread on his part. The only other miscue on his part was just basically his retelling of the story. I did say that I respected him as a player. I still do, actually. Uh, that never that never kind of changed or anything like that. I saw him as competition when I was around the master circuit. If I saw him on the other team, I directly wanted to go at him. Like, he was basically the bar. That was how I saw it. Uh, that was the kind of player. That's the kind of player I am. If I see a big name, like, I don't get starstruck at all. You know, you feel the nerves and stuff like that. I think that's normal because, you know, you're going against somebody that you know is better than you in every way possible, but you're still going to go at them because you have to. Like, that's how you get better. That's how you make a name for yourself is by going at the best guys. So, you know, you show them that respect uh, out of competition to some degree within the competition but for the most part when the competition is on it's war like it is what it is like they're the, they're on the other side i'm on my team they're on the other side it's fuck you the whole time go at that guy as hard as you can and then when the game is over when the competition is over you go back to respecting them there, there, there's no malice there so just to stay on track. Yeah, I still I still have respect for the guy as a player, but again, when I had the wrong conception of him as a person, that was when I came out and I said directly to him that I thought he was a douchebag or a piece of shit or whatever. And he came back with some uh cliche, oh like I I like uh real original, like uh I haven't heard that one before, blah blah blah, yawn, real original. To which I retorted you know you want to speak about original but every single day on your streams you're over here like imagine this imagine that imagine this imagine that and that was like the current flavor of the month with like every streamer everybody sounded like a fucking recording like a broken fucking record almost every single stream you went to everybody was saying the same shit that was another thing with with the heroes stream environment as well specifically with the gm circle these motherfuckers like had a playbook of like catchphrases that they would all repeat on each other's streams and you know it was like the cool thing and like the viewers would eat that shit up and i just wasn't a fan of it and you know i threw that back at him he had no real response for it and then he played he he played his uh his uh celebrity card as i'm calling it i knew it was coming as soon as i realized he was there in my mind i was like okay part of me was like all right there's no saving how this goes for shig anymore so i just have to say whatever i'm gonna say the other part of my mind is like i have maybe one or two responses or i have x amount of responses before this guy comes out like i don't even know who you are because you know i'm so relevant and i'm so successful and you know i made it and you didn't and your channel sucks blah 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 already i was waiting for that I was waiting. I just came out sooner than I thought it would. And like, it was like his, uh, his, his like second or third response was, I don't even know who I'm talking to right now. And I was like, all right, there it is. There's a celebrity card. He didn't play it as hard as I thought he was going to, but he, he still played it. And, uh, thankfully, like nobody really paid it any mind, but me, I feel like. And then, that, uh, there were like some other troll dudes that were in the chat that they started taking his attention away and uh they started getting in on it and he had already banned them over at in his stream and he was you know talking to those guys and it kind of, it kind of blew over but um yeah that story came up like three times three different times like one of them one of them while he would just to kind of like prove my point that i was actually like uh, a fan of the guy's like content and like his channel i would even lurk in there when he wasn't playing heroes like i, I was like a legitimate viewer I didn't just leave the second he got off of hots like i watched the guy play dark souls before thought those were good streams i thought uh his Sekiro streams were good um and like he would lose like any other streamer 
he would lose like most of his viewers once he jumped off of HOTS. He'd go from being a 500 viewer guy to like a 100 viewer guy. And I was one of those 100. And those happened to be the times when he would bring up the story. It was when he was off HOTS for the most part. And, uh, you know, I would just laugh. I would just hear it. And, like, I could have easily, like, did the same thing he did and came out and said something in the chat. Like, that's not how that happened. But I already knew. Like, it's one of those things that if I come out and I say something back to the guy on his channel, I lose instantly. It doesn't even matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I say. It could be positive. It could be negative. The minute I say something, I understand how the game works. And I feel like he understands how the game works, too. And, um, uh, I think it was one of those situations where if I didn't get the misread, if I didn't, uh, get the wrong read on the guy first, I, I don't put it on him. I put that whole thing on me because I was the one who got the wrong read first. If I didn't have the wrong idea, because there was a lot of similarities, there's a lot of similarities between the guy, that kind of guy that he appears to be and the kind of guy that I am. It's just, I'm older. Like, I'm way older. So, like, uh, my chill factor is, like, a lot less than his. Um, so, because there was a lot of similarities there, like, we, we specialize in the same role. Only he, he's not just a tank or a bust. Like, he can play whatever he wants and he'll be fine. I eventually got to a point where I was basically tank or bust. Uh, there, that could have been something that that could have been like a cool dynamic, basically. I don't want to say that we would have been friends, but it might have been like a cool uh, dynamic anytime I cross paths with the guy. But because I got the misread wrong and the first impression was bad, none of that came to pass. And uh, like, it is what it is. I take that on the chin. That, that, I would fully say that's my fault and nobody else's. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a funny situation to look back on where, uh, you know, you, you kind of get caught saying your opinion about somebody. You're not lying about your opinion. You're saying it exactly how it is. And it, it, uh, it starts a bad trend basically the rest of the way. And uh, I played against the guy uh, a number of times when I was getting into Masters games. The fu a funnier thing is the first time I came across him, he was on a Smurf. And uh, I was on his team. Somehow I knew who all his friends were, but I didn't realize that he was on the main, he was on the Smurf account. And uh, I don't even think he would remember this, but I remember it. And... Uh, I remember if I remember Shake talking to me after the fact, so he might remember it if I want once I bring up the story. It was on one of the Diablo maps. I want to say it was on Shrines. <laughs> Already laughing. <laughs> I didn't realize Leon was on a Smurf, but I recognized all his buddies, and for some dumb reason, I thought his buddies were just playing without him in a group, and then he was just missing for some weird reason, <laughs> and I didn't think to check to see if he was streaming. This is when I was plat, by the way. Like, this was way before, like, any of these guys even knew who I was. So, uh, I preemptively bodied him off of the Diablo pick, not knowing it was him. Uh, I think he was on his Funhauser account. That was the name of that account or something like that. I, I, I apologize if I butchered the name. It was something like that, though. I bodied him off for the Diablo thing without even thinking about it because I didn't know it was him. He ended up playing Hanzo. Obviously, he played out of his mind. Uh, I didn't. He was yelling at me from the onset in the chat, or at least that's how I thought it was. He was yelling at me like, uh, and this is something that I'm going to get into as well, the difference between how a Masters, how, how a GM or a Masters player sees the game versus a low ELO guy. I'm actually going to get into this a little bit later. But this, I was a victim of this with, with my first encounter with Leon on a Smurf. He was telling me to stop waiting. He was like, yo, he was like, my, the Toronto player knows that the Toronto was heavy. I knew who heavy was. So, like, I knew he was good. So he was like, yo, stop waiting. Charge a guy into the wall and flip him, and we'll do the rest. And, uh, you know, my platinum eyes couldn't see the opportunities that his GM eyes were seeing. So I thought I was going, like, ham. And, like, I know for a fact I wasn't. 
and like it got to the point where like i was getting farmed and like i had like fucking seven deaths or something like that and i'm like man i'm just dying left and right this guy's fucking yelling at me i want to like fucking tell him to shut the fuck up even though like i'm playing like shit so eventually i i i pulled the, i pulled the trigger and i fucking muted him because i didn't want to just get yelled at the whole time and then somebody came in uh, a guy that would float around uh in higher level streamers chats he apparently he knew i was streaming and uh he came over to my stream he was like yo he was just trying to help you and i was like yeah i i didn't realize when he said he he was referring to leon so I was like, sure, but you know, I said something stupid. Like he could have went about it better or whatever. Like I was trying my best. Cause at one point before I muted him, he was like, they're feeding, they're feeding, they're feeding, they're feeding. He kept like spamming it over and over and over again. And in my mind, I'm like, motherfucker, no, I'm feeding me, I'm feeding. And I remember typing at him, like they have three deaths on their team. And at the time we had like 10 and like six of them were me. And, uh, you know, none of that was their fault. It was purely me. It was purely my fault. I was playing like shit. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting, this guy's yelling at me to keep going and keep going. And I'm like, bro, every time I go, I die. <laughs> like, that was how my platinum eyes were seeing it. So I muted him because I was like, yo, I can't fucking, like, I can't play under this. And I cleaned it up, like, on the second half of the game or as much as I could for a platinum player. They basically did the rest of the work, and uh, I basically stopped being a detriment. That's what I'll say. I won't say that I cleaned it up. I'll say that I stopped being as heavy as I was, and they basically carried me the rest of the way. And then uh, Shig ended up watching the game afterwards, and then I think that was when I realized that the guy that was yelling at me was actually him on a Smurf. And I told the first dude, I was like, yo, no bullshit. If I would have realized that was him on that account, I would have taken that completely differently and I would have just listened because I didn't know that it was a GM player telling me what to do. I thought it was just some platinum asshole who, you know, didn't know any better. And uh, I didn't find it weird at all that he was playing extremely well. He had one play where he he uh, he fucked up. I want to say bottom lane. He went one V five and he was actually doing it successfully. And then he, he got killed by like the very last guy. And I was sitting there laughing like, yeah that's what you get for being overconfident and like mind you i was ignoring the fact that he he fucking danced around like four of them and it was just the fifth guy that he didn't get and i totally you know because i was i was mad i was in my bag and i just totally discredited the first four kills and i saw the fifth one got him and i was like yeah get fucked but you know yeah it was it was a funny first experience that i didn't realize or i didn't find funny until well after but yeah i want to say the, those first two times coming across the guy definitely uh definitely set the trend for like the rest of the times and i very much thought that he was still playing the game you know uh the banter game anytime i can it was like one of those things where i felt like anytime i came across the guy he was probably roasting me he more than likely he, he might have not been i don't want to say more than likely i don't know but it was one of those things i was like anytime i saw the guy from that point on he knew who i was i was like yeah this guy's probably tearing me a new one let me just fucking tune him out and it is what it is and uh it wasn't always that i was against him when i came across him there was sometimes there was like one or two times we were on the same team and uh there was only one time that i thought he was kind of taking a shot at me a little bit and uh I left the chat on because this is when I had developed the mindset of like muting everybody on my team when I was playing alone. I would mute all the chat and mute all pings and then just focus on playing the game my way. And I actually did that for like seasons. And more importantly, I, I'd argue that I did it successfully. I got good at it, actually. Just playing the game with no comms, no nothing. So that there was no avenue where I could get triggered by somebody talking shit. And, um,. I could just focus. So that was the idea. If you cut away, if you cut all communication away, you basically spend 100% of the game focusing on the game and nothing else. That was my mindset. Um, I'm not saying it's the correct mindset, by the way. It was just kind of what I felt worked for me at the time. I'm not advocating that to anybody listening to this, if you are even listening to this. Um... But yeah, I had one game with him where I left the comms on specifically in case like he was going to tell me to do something so I could listen. I was on Artanis. It was a uh, Cursed Hollow. 
I was on Artanis. I had one wave where one OBJ where I said I was going to be late because I was stuck up top and uh, he didn't say anything. Uh, second or third OBJ comes up. I didn't say anything. I was already on my way rotating to the OBJ on time. And then he randomly typed, I think Artanis is going to be late. And I was like, okay. Uh, I'm literally walking to the OBJ now. Or I'm on my mount. I'm going to be there clearly on time. But I guess that was just his his attempt to, like, you know, take take the piss at me or something like that. So I was like, I didn't even acknowledge it. I was like, I just left it alone. I was like, all right, he's on his, he, he's, he's on his bullshit. And that's that. There was a, a guy on our team because it was him, I think, Hebby, and one other guy uh, that he was buddies with. There was three of them. And then there was just me and one other random. I think the other random might have said something to them that got them fired up because they spent most of that game roasting this guy and, like, completely tearing him a new one. And at first, I thought it was towards me, and I was like, oh, this is kind of what I was expecting, even though... I felt like I didn't do anything to warrant that. And then as the game went on, I realized, like, wait, no, they're not actually talking about me. They're they're going at the other guy. And that's when I started to, like, relax a little bit. And I left it alone. And I, for a second, I thought to, like, watch his stream to see what happened. But then I was like, you know what? It didn't even involve me. And, you know, best case scenario, I had nothing to worry about. It didn't involve me. Worst case scenario... It did involve the other guy, but he still had something slick to say about me. And then all of a sudden, that's how the floodgates opened again. And, you know, I just avoided it. I was like, it, it's whatever. And uh, that's just kind of how that played out. But, yeah, that was sidebar number two. The the <laughs> the unintentional, the, the, the avoidable bad conflict with the GM streamer. And uh, the thing I used to think, the thing that kind of set me off on the wrong the wrong just to kind of put this out there officially i felt like the guy was a fight he was officially a 500 viewer streamer i felt like he was good enough to be a 1k streamer he was entertaining enough to be a 1k streamer i thought the only reason that he was 500 and he never went any higher ever without a host i thought was purely because of his attitude and that was basically the basis of like everything that i thought about the guy was that his attitude was holding him back not his gameplay not his uh his demeanor as a streamer or anything like that it was literally just his attitude and that was where everything that i said that day that we f we first crossed paths that's where that came from and uh there was one random time uh because i'm gonna i am gonna have a small portion about this a uh, small portion here uh going into the malganis era if you will there was one time where uh, somebody asked him because I came up twice. There was two situations where I came. My name was brought up in his stream. And the first time I was essentially thrown to the wolves and uh, or maybe it was three times. I don't know. And I think it was three times I was brought up. But uh, shit, lost my train of thought. I'm trying to think of why I was going to bring this up. Oh, there was one time that I got brought up. Uh, somebody, uh, a dude with a female name as a Twitch name, uh, brought me up on his, uh, on Leon's stream. We were on the same team going against Leon. We lost. I was playing Malganis. He went over to Leon's stream and he started making fun of me. Like, oh, with my 52% win rate on Malganis, I know what I'm doing. And like, I'm going to pick this for his part leon didn't really say anything he just kind of read it and like i guess laughed a little bit but he didn't really say anything but it is what it is like the guy said what he said in his chat and one of my viewers screenshotted it so that i could see it and then he posted it in the discord when i saw it i was like okay bet now i know how this guy feels that guy being a guy named iris again a guy named iris weird but you know whatever uh he he would end up coming to the stream at a later time wondering why he was banned and all i told him was that i banned him because he was phony but that's the whole that was the whole idea behind that was that i was screenshotted him talking shit in leon's stream in his chat behind my back but then anytime he was around me he was trying to be all friendly because he's a he's a hype man he's that's all he is he's a glorified hype man he basically just shows up into everybody's chat whoever stream it is, 
and he just tries to gas him the whole time and like invite himself to be like you know a friend or something like that he tries to project himself in a way where like you know please like me please pay attention to me see me see me see me i'm i'm cool i'm nice i'm i'm blowing you the whole time please like me please please like me that's him every stream he goes into he just blows the streamer and tells them whatever he thinks they want to hear and the funny thing is like across the board none of them really acknowledge him like that they'll read what he says they they'll they'll read whatever he has to say in chat but none of them take him seriously so it's like he's just always been wasting his time with that one nobody respects him nobody likes him it's a it's a hard life for the guy i digress uh that was one time i got brought up over there another time i got brought up in in leon's stream was when somebody asked about my level seven talent and uh i think shig was the one that made me aware of this one and because it was it was the guy that screenshotted the first one was the guy that brought me up after a game that we played against each other where i used to take the level seven talent on malganis uh i think it was called black claws where uh you basically have follow through after you landed a q swipe and it was something that i was uh i was naturally comfortable using because i was using it the whole time now granted i could understand from a gm perspective where leon was coming from and his, his critique of the talent because he he basically called it a grief for talent and uh you know he his reasoning was like there was no realistic way you could go into a high level game and they would allow you to auto attack them after swiping with a Q. And it was because it mechanically felt awkward to him because he was used to three quick swipes, no breaks. So it is a jarring change of philosophy with your mechanics to go from three swipes to swipe, break, swipe, break. That wasn't necessarily my mindset and how I always used it, though. And that was just me being weird. Like, that was my, my, I had a constantly shifting view of, like, what was value versus what was not value. But I made it work. There was a number of guys I used to catch off guard with that talent, wondering where the fuck that extra burst of damage was coming from, and it was just me. Like, why am I getting 1v1 by the tank? It was a level 7 talent. That's what it is. That extra burst in between those cues that you're just casually letting me land. And that was the, that was the other part of Leon's critique of the talent was that he, he I think he literally said word for word, there's no realistic scenario where a Masters or a GM player will just allow you to, stu to stutter step and stand there auto attacking after you land a cue. Months would go by, I actually killed a Masters or GM player and a GM player using that seven talent stutter stepping and just getting auto attacks in between the queue smile uh, and then there was a third time this is where i i kind of i kind of felt like he was still playing the game you know air quotes the game where somebody they were asking his opinions on malganis or something like that when that when malganis became meta and i was already running it like all the time uh all the time uh for like a month already before he became meta i was doing that i i the official the official like uh understanding will always make it look like leon was the one that made malganis meta because again he was the relevant streamer he's the guy that had the audience and he was like the best uh na tank player so it's like i kind of understood that he was gonna get all the credit for that and i'm not saying that that's that that, that was wrong but I was playing, like, people who were around my stream, they knew what it was. Like, I was playing that for a whole month, day in and day out, before anybody even thought to look at him as a meta hero. Nobody ever gave me credit for that at all. Nobody. Not that I needed it, but, like, that's how it actually played out. That's how it actually happened. But I digress. Um, third time I came up on his stream was around the Malganis conversation and uh, somebody clipped it and sent it over to me uh, in case I wanted to hear what he said because somebody specifically asked about me to him and he just laughed and he said perfection and I took it as a I, I didn't take it as a literal his literal opinion about me as Malganis 
I thought he was taking the piss at me again. He was playing the game. So I laughed when I saw it. And I was like, okay, not bad. Not bad. That was pretty good. He's gonna he's gonna kill me with fake kindness by saying that word. It's not where I thought it was it's not where I thought he would go with it. I thought he was gonna be a lot more obvious and just say that I was trash. But and then going the other way, I was like, alright, that was actually pretty good. Like it made me laugh. I was like, all right. He didn't he didn't go as hard as I thought he was gonna go, but it was still it was still a good response. Um It was a good way to say that I wasn't shit without actually saying that I wasn't shit. So I respected it. But yeah, that was that. Um, what do we got left? We got... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I kind of don't want this video to go that much longer because I still have like five things on the bullet point, maybe six. And I'm starting to feel like they're not all important. So we might shorten some of these moving forward to kind of save some time here. Uh, if you're still here with me, uh, seriously, appreciate it. If uh, you feel like this has been a cool video or, you know, it hasn't really felt like we've been here as long as we have. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. So technically looking at my notepad now, we did the sidebar of uh, the, the Leon Black story. Looking at this as I initially wrote it, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight more things listed here. Will I actually get to eight more things? I'm not sure. But we'll try our best because, you know, I'm kind of getting tired of talking too. You see, this is, this is a good little test run for a potential podcast kind of thing, even though in a podcast format, I'd be talking with people, so I wouldn't be talking nonstop like I am on this. This is more of like a commentary where it's just me, so like maybe I wouldn't get like voice fatigue in a podcast scenario, like I'm getting a little fatigue now. All right. Um... So the next thing on the list, the short three seasons where I made it slash how everything changed. Oh, okay. So I, I guess this is talking about the Masters seasons. Essentially, okay, so I'm going to merge this with a later top, a later bullet point I had where I was specifically going to talk about the Masters game and how it feels when you're actually playing in them. And the real reason why higher ranked players are so hostile towards lower rank players so i'm gonna just merge those into one topic here and save me some time there um so it goes without saying the first thing you will notice about playing in a masters in a gm game that you don't really see at all it really is night and day like it goes from one extreme to the other it is the speed of the game this is something that you can't really tell lower level players about. They have to experience it for themselves. Players up at that level, I'm not saying that they do everything right. No player in no ELO does everything right. The best player in the game will be the first one to tell you that. In any game, by the way, not just heroes. But, uh, yeah, man, the speed of the game. Holy shit. They are so much faster with their decision making up top. It, it, it it's something that you can't even see on stream really, unless you know, unless you are f familiar with it. You've learned the master language essentially, if you want to, if you want to phrase it that way. Once you get yourself acclimated to how fast they operate up there, then you can see it on stream and you can see it clear as day. Remember, circle back to what I said earlier about Golnar critiquing my gameplay. He was critiquing it from a higher from a higher skill level. As a guy who, who saw a different speed and then would go watching my games and see how slow I was with everything. And I didn't feel like I was slow. Circle back to the to the Leon story. When I was a plat and I was playing tank, he was just trying to tell me what to do. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. I feel like I am going. I was too slow. I was way too slow. I couldn't see what he was seeing. He was seeing opportunities everywhere. I was seeing 
fuck all. <laughs> so, and there is a guy. There is another guy. I, I want to. I kind of want to give credit to, as a, a big proponent of uh, what, what started, what kick started my 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 uh, my change of philosophy as a player. What kick started my 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 turning of a corner that I did finally get over that hump into uh becoming like a masters level player um skill wise a lot of that was uh a lot of that was was uh from another guy who was popular on the season popular on the scene i should say for uh, uh a small while before he moved in a different direction named bam bam where he was a Diablo one trick for the most part. He was a man, he was a tank man. He could play whatever he wanted, but he made his bones on stream as a Diablo one trick. Even though he could play other shit. And uh I remember that, like properly I used to watch him just for like laughs because he was a he was a fun stream to watch. Then I started actually watching him to like learn because he was playing tank every single game and for the most part he was just winning all the time and I was like, "Whoa, how the fuck is he doing that? And that's when I really stopped to sit and really like actually watch what he was doing. And it was his aggression. He had this mindset that I came to like basically carry with me everywhere. Where it was like, you see a guy, you hit a guy. He never worded it that 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 way necessarily. But that was how he played. If he saw you somewhere, you were getting touched. And he played that way from start to finish. And it was something that I zeroed in on when I saw it. And I was like, there's no hesitation on his engages. There's no fear on his engages. And he lives with the result, whether it goes good or it goes bad. So it was a philosophy that I embraced and I, I, I applied it to my game. And as soon as I did, I noticed a change overnight. All of a sudden, I was starting to see kill opportunities all over the fucking place. Especially on main tank. Because you're the first motherfucker through the door. You are the start of the fight. Or you're supposed to be the start of the fight. You are the hard engage. Everybody waits for your cue. They wait for you to say the fight starts. And then everybody gets it on. So, watching him and like how aggressive he was had a big influence on what what were what, what, what like um my turnaround as a player my aggression levels all of a sudden i started seeing the game from a master's perspective which helped me with my speed i stopped hesitating i stopped overthinking every little thing i stopped waiting for the perfect ideal situation now on some level that sounds like you know that sounds like a bad idea because obviously you could rush into bad situations. Absolutely. I would not sit here and say otherwise. But that's the nature of the beast. That's how they play up there. They see it. They go for it. Nobody, nobody up in Masters is ever sitting around waiting to be told what to do. Everybody already knows what to do. They know what they want to do. Everybody has specific visual cues they're looking for. And as soon as they see it, it's like uh, it's like shooting a gun at a race. Everybody's off. As soon as they hear that gunshot, they just take off. That's how everybody plays up there. So transitioning, when you take a high-level guy who's used to that speed and that aggression, and you throw them in the pool with low-level guys who don't have any of that, the really good ones will just dominate the games by themselves because they see the cues everywhere and they're good enough mechanically to just go out there and get some on their own. You know, on DPS carries, that is, for the most part. There's some exceptions where they'll do a build. Some guys can do it on tanks, for sure, or healers, no question. But for the most part, DPS carries. They see mistakes, like, you know, clear as day, and they abuse mistakes. Uh, to some degree, they, they farm the other team before their team can be farmed. And this is kind of where the disconnect happens between high-level guys and low-level guys. Because the high-level guys see these mistakes clear as day, 
The thing is, they don't only see these mistakes on the other team. They see these mistakes on their team. And they try to share that information with the lower level guys. And I want to paint a clear picture here because I don't want to make it seem like any one side of this coin is completely in the clear. They're not. The high level guys, for the most part, more more like more than half of those high level guys on average they won't just give this information in the friendliest kind of way they'll give it in an aggressive kind of way that a low level guy is not really receptible to so off the rip you already have one avenue where there's a disconnect between the high level guy and the low level guy the high level guy is being is giving valuable information in a invaluable way the lower level guy as a result is only registering the the delivery of the information and not the information itself on top of having a natural attitude of i already know everything i don't need to hear anything from you because i already know everything mind you they don't know shit the high level guy then has a disconnect from seeing the low level guys um unwillingness to receive the information and take the criticism and that further eggs them to be um, aggressive with everything that they're going to say from there. It's a, it's a revolving door, basically. It's an endless cycle where the person with the goods doesn't have the greatest way of delivering the goods. The person without the goods needs the goods, wants the goods, but only wants them if they're delivered to them a specific kind of way. And neither one of those are ever going to be at a place where, like, everything's all good. So you just have a forever divide there between both sides. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the reason why most high-level guys seem like elitists. And they seem like assholes and douchebags whenever they are around lower-level guys. A lot of you guys have an ego. And you have an ego for no reason. Where the higher-level guys might have an ego too, but... With all due respect, they put in the time and the work to get to where they are, for the most part. So they feel like they've earned the right to have an ego. Where you haven't put in that time, and you haven't gotten to where they've gotten. To earn that same respect. To have earned that same ego. It is what it is. Moving on. Uh, I feel like that could have been a video in and of itself. Rather than a, a small piece of a large pie. Um, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Uh, I'm going to leave this sidebar out. I actually just decided I don't really feel like getting into it because it's not important at all. So yeah, sorry. I promised three sidebars. Two of them were, two of them were good enough. Third one, not worth bringing up. Uh, I mentioned the Malganis period basically where I was maining him. Uh, honestly, there was no, like, secret, you know, fucking code or language that I was seeing that nobody else was seeing. I, I was playing Malganis because I thought he was fun. That was really all it was. I just enjoyed the character. That's how I, that's the guy I was, all right? If I had fun playing a hero, there wasn't no, nothing nobody could tell me that I wasn't going to play that hero. My fun was going to be there along with the hard work, okay? So... I was playing the guy for like a whole month before anybody even thought to look at him because the initial MO on Malganis when he first came out was that he was trash. He was a tank because there was that little there was that little wondering phase like was he a tank or was he a bruiser? For the most part people realized he was a tank, he was a legitimate tank, but that for the most part they thought he was trash. And it was simply that nobody had figured out how to use him at the time. That's all it was. Or, excuse me, no GM player had figured out how to use him properly. They didn't see where his avenues were, where what his strengths were, his upsides. They just saw a character that didn't really do anything any sp do anything special. And not to throw him under the bus here, but... I remember Shig saying it on stream one time when he was asked about the character. And his exact quote, his exact statement at the time was, It's kind of hard to say a hero is good that doesn't have a hard engage and you know 
me being a lower skilled player than him, I just kind of laughed at that. He's entitled to his opinion. It is what it is. The seasons would go on. Nothing would fundamentally change about Mal Gannis, and then all of a sudden, he, like a bunch of other people, were all of a sudden playing it and singing a different tune, saying the hero was good. Who knows how that happens? Smile. Um, but yeah, I. The funny thing that I wanted to bring up was that with Mal Gannis was that I was just playing him for fun. I didn't actually turn the corner towards playing him seriously with serious intent until I had a game where I was uh I was playing with uh some diamond accounts. Uh maybe one masters guy in a five stack and I was uh I was on a losing I was losing real bad, real bad to the point where I demoted to plat 1 and I got into a game with fan on the other side. He was playing Li Ming on uh Towers of Doom. And uh I played as hard as I could. Obviously, I was nervous, but, you know, I wasn't... Again, I'm not starstruck when I see these guys. It, it, it motivates me to play harder when I see them. And, uh, you know, try my best to, like, you know, not embarrass myself out there. So I was on main tank, and I was on Malganis, and uh, one of his uh, regulars came over to my stream after the game and said that he, he thought I did all right. You know, not not great, but like I was basically kind of like really annoying on the other side. Like I was blocking all of his orbs on the Li Ming, and uh, I was putting a lot of pressure on the on the other side. And essentially, that was all I needed to hear. When I heard that from 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 the one guy who was a coach, by the way, he he used to coach on his own spare time, so he was coming from a different standpoint. I didn't know he was a coach at the time. I found this out later, but still, it didn't matter to me. It was just the information that was given that was all I needed. When I found out that fan thought I did okay, I was off I was off to the races. I was like, okay, this is a sign. I need to actually stick with this and work on it. And that was actually what got me on that trail to playing it all the time seriously and essentially um, having developing that scouting report, which... Um, I'll, I'll actually this is another bullet point that i'll merge into this one which is like the target banning phase so eventually we hit a point where i was playing malganis well enough that people weren't really playing against me uh all that well and uh i didn't always have the greatest reputation with the guys on my team because of how aggressive i played and uh I, 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 there was no feeling out process for me at all. As soon as the game started, if I saw you, I was throwing punches. That was how I played. I wanted to mix it in, see what you, see what you got, see what you're going to hit me with. I'm going to throw my best punch. You're going to throw your best punch. We're going to see who's still standing and we're going to go from there. That was my mindset at all times, every single game. I don't give a shit. You can tell me the, the, the greatest God tier player in the world is on the other side. He is just another target to me. That's all I see. I do not see the greatest player in the world. I see a guy that's standing in my way that I have to go through. And you know what? I'm going to give it my all and I'm going to try and go right through him. I'm not going to avoid him at all. And um, I, uh, as a result of playing with that mindset, I wasn't ever overly popular with my teammates. My teammates, more often than not, didn't like the way that I played. The ironic part is that the guys on the other side, on the receiving end of my aggression, they hated me too, but for respectful reasons. They would actually be on the receiving end, seeing how annoying it was to play against the pressure all the time. And I was good at playing with pressure. It wasn't that I was like, you know, mechanically sound or anything like that. I was just really good at being annoying. And that was the whole premise of my play style, was just to be annoying. Constantly be in your face, constantly be doing things that you don't want me to do. Whether it gets you killed or not, it doesn't matter. It's making your life miserable. That was my whole play style. That's my thing. And there were countless times where guys on my team would be giving me shit for engaging all the time and, like, you know, not waiting for people to, like, you know, for them to be ready. And my mindset, this might sound a little elitist on my part. 
And, you know, I apologize for that a little bit, but not really. Um, tank's the leader. No other way to say it. The tank is the leader on the team when it comes to, like, damn near everything. The tank is the one that decides when the shit goes down. Tank is daddy. The healer is mom. Mom's job is basically to make sure everybody's provided for and everybody's, like, doing well and healthy. Everybody's got food. Everybody is okay. Everybody's, everybody's having a good time. Dad, daddy's job is to go out and hunt and bring that fucking food back for mom to like spread it out to the kids <laughs> so that's what i did i would go out and i would hunt and it didn't matter to me if you were ready for it or not when daddy says it's time to go it's time to go when i engage you follow there is no democracy here there is no game planning there is no strategy there's none of that shit there's no feelings none of that how the dps player feels about a situation it does not matter if i see the opportunity and i start to present the opportunity i expect the guys behind me to fall in line and follow up on that opportunity i don't give a shit if you don't like the opportunity i don't give a shit if you think there's a better opportunity somewhere else once i commit to the opportunity in front of me you commit period and it either works or it doesn't but as long as you followed up on what I was trying to do, no harm, no foul. I don't care if we don't succeed. I care if you don't try. That's how it is when you're a tank. You are the first one through the door. It means you have the most say on what happens when you get through the door. It just is what it is. If you want a bigger say at that, at, in that conversation, you be the first one through the door. With all due respect you be the one stepping in dangerous areas at all times providing vision for your team and taking all the hits you do all the dirty work that nobody else wants to do then you have a bigger say in those conversations but until then you keep your fucking mouth shut and you follow the leader that's how that works so um i never had a good reputation with my teammates they hated me for the most part they hated playing with me but the 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 saving grace in those situations was the guys on the other side respected me they didn't like me either but they would at least respect what i was doing and they sometimes occasionally i would get into games on with guys that uh were just on the enemy team and as soon as they saw me on their team they were like oh thank god and they would tell me about like how good of a job I did just pressuring them the whole time or how annoying it was to play against me. And they were relieved that I was on their side. And you know what the funny thing is? My response almost every single time would be my teammates didn't see it that way. My teammates were flaming me the whole time because they thought I was too aggressive. And every single time I would say that, the guys on the other team would be mind blown. Or they would laugh and say, wow, if, if they followed up on like half of the shit you were doing you guys might have won the game because more often than not when i when i would lose games it was literally just because i had no help or people just not committing when i would commit it's actually a problem that follows me in like every game that i play is people not committing when i commit because i see the opportunity before everybody else around me and i go for it i don't wait like that's not how it works when the opportunity is there the opportunity is there if somebody makes a mistake, you have to punish it. Regardless of what game you're playing, that's competition. You can't wait for that, that mistake to just take care of itself. But, um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a weird divide between how I was seen uh, between teammates and opponents, and it ultimately led to me getting target banned on a regular basis because people didn't like playing against it. And uh, it was it was uh, it wasn't a secret or anything like that, but it was I, I used to be able to play pressure on Malganis in ways that I wasn't allowed to play that pressure on other characters. To some degree, I could still pull it off on Arthas. I, I would still to this day say that I was a better Arthas player than I was a Malganis player. Nobody ever really banned my Arthas because they didn't know about it. I wasn't I wasn't on the radar for Arthas. I was only on the radar for Malganis. They saw me as a Malganis one trick. So eventually we hit a point where I started getting target banned all the time because that's what the high level guys do. When they see a problem that they can't figure out, they just ban it and they get rid of it. They don't believe in 
they don't believe in beating people at full strength. That just doesn't seem worth it to those guys. That's kind of not who I am mentally as a competitor. I feel like if I have to take away your best tool in order to beat you, then I'm not actually beating you. And that's just a me thing. That, that, that kind of mindset is why I will never be at the top of the mountain and other people will. Is because they don't have an ego about that kind of stuff. They can sit there and be like, yeah, this guy is too good. I'm just going to take this away and then I'm going to be better than him. That's not how I operate. I need to know that if I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you at your absolute best. So whenever I had the crown, I wasn't target banning anybody. Even if I knew there was stuff that I wanted to take away that I should be taking away because that's the way that's the way the high level guys do it. I didn't give a fuck about that. If I saw one trick on the other side, I want him on his one trick so that when I beat him, if I beat him, there's no excuse. I beat you at your absolute best shit on my best shit. There's no conversation after that. You can't say nothing. You can't take anything away from me at that point. You had your best dog in the race. I had mine and mine came out on top. There's no further discussion, but that's not the way it works up top. And, uh, you know, it was something that I couldn't find a way around, uh, along with other things that, uh, basically to kind of like, uh, TLDR, some more bullet points I have on here that ultimately led to me putting the game down was that I hit a phase where I was essentially just getting griefed like damn near all the time. If people saw me on their team, they would either just like walk around like not trying or not playing in some cases or they would just feed out of their minds. And then when I would see them on the other team, they all of a sudden will become like seasoned pros who didn't make any mistakes and were just playing out of their minds. And then they would be back on my team and it was right back to like Oompa Loompa status, walking around bullshitting. And it took me a little while to realize to, to come to my own conclusion that it was it was it was a targeted type of thing and uh it was deliberate and it was actually something that i saw happen to another streamer uh a month after i put the game down it was starting to happen to somebody else too where every time they saw him on his main they were just throwing the game just because he was a streamer and they thought it was haha funny and uh they have nothing better to do with their time so he used to have to play on new accounts under a, a, a new name until they would eventually figure out that it was him on that account too and the whole process would start again. I had too much pride and too much of an ego to go the route of making new accounts. I refused to do it. So I took that on the chin more than anybody. And uh, eventually it got to the point where I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm just not having fun on this anymore. And uh, I would very literally be on streams for days on end, just not talking while I was playing the game. And uh, I had my camera off, thank God, because if I had the camera on, you would have just saw me in a miserable state. And that's not fun to watch. And uh, I struggled a bit. I'm merging more bullet points here because I want to wrap this up. But, um, you know... It got to the point where I realized it was it was like literally unhealthy for me to continue playing the game the way it was currently going. And uh, it took me a while to fully move on. I kept coming back every now and then to play one or two games to see if it was any different. It would never be any different. And then finally, I finally had a game that was just, it got me so upset that I was like, you know what? I'm actually done with this. I uninstalled again that day for like the 15th time. And, uh... I haven't gone back. And unlike previous times where like I knew there was always that 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 chance that possibility of going back just for like one or two games to see, you know, whatever. When those when those uh returns, those short returns used to happen, I was still watching streams of the game. So that temptation was always still there because I was watching other people still have somewhat of a good time playing the game 
And then my mind will process it as maybe it's been long enough where I'll be allowed to have a good time. And it could be like the old days where I was streaming this all the time. And like, you know, my buddies were in the chat. We were having a good time. And it was literally just for the love of the game. And uh, I would debate myself into thinking that that was a reality I could go back to. And then I would find out the hard way that it's not. And uh, the thing that I know ever since that I'm not going back and I'm never going back is that I've stopped. Uh, I haven't said this out loud until now, actually. I've just stopped watching streams of the game wholesale. And uh, it's literally gotten that hardcore. Like anybody that streams the game, I just don't watch them at all, really. And... Uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am. So there is no temptation anymore. There's just the bad feeling, me remembering the bad feeling clear as day, and uh, me enjoying myself basically on literally anything else that I can try to enjoy myself on. I've been on Xbox ever since, uh, just having fun with Game Pass. And uh, here lately, um, I've gotten really back into Destiny 2, and uh, that game is in the middle of a... That game is in the middle of a of a a correction in the ship's course, if you will. So, I've just been trying to enjoy myself over there, and uh, I told myself with how it ended for me in Heroes that I would never allow myself to continue participating in a game that makes me feel miserable. That's not the point of gaming, in any capacity, in any space, in any reality, in any scenario. You're not supposed to feel miserable while you're playing a video game. So, yeah, I put the game down and I haven't touched it since. I don't know how long it's been now, but there is no chance I go. I can say that with confidence. There's no chance I ever go back to that at all. At all for, for, for a myriad of reasons. None, none uh, like uh, not the smallest being that. I'm just in a better place now with the console gaming and uh, Game Pass is in a place now where we're getting something new every single month. So there's just new opportunities for me to pursue as a gamer that I never have to go back to an old toxic one ever. So yeah, that's everything that happened uh, since I put YouTube down. Um, if you made it this far, holy shit you're a legend uh i genuinely appreciate it i have no idea how long this video is because i don't have it i just literally hit record i saw a youtube video this is kind of like what got me like okay you know let me just do something i don't know the guy's name but i saw a youtube video that was talking about like something he wished he would have told himself like 10 years in advance and it was i think the name of the video was don't uh don't plan or don't think, just start. And when I watched the video, it was like a two minute video at the best. He was saying that he was talking about how a lot of people's ideas and stuff like that never end, never actually end up happening because they always think of like the grand scheme instead of just the immediate starting point. Like if there's a plan that has like 12 steps, everybody always focuses on all 12 steps at the same time rather than just focusing on step one and then slowly moving on to step two and so on and so forth. Just worry about the door in front of you, basically. So the whole point of his video is just start and then uh, think about the rest, figure out the rest as you go along. And uh, with these first two uploads, with me just kind of talking and a blue screen being there, that's kind of what I'm doing. I just basically turned on OBS hit start recording didn't really look into any of my settings or anything like that just did a test video to make sure that my voice could be heard and that was about it pulled up the mic pulled up the blue screen started talking and uh whatever happens happens and uh if you've actually sat with me through this uh thank you like seriously thank you and uh even to the millions of people who didn't 
<laughs> that's fine that's just fine because like i said these videos are going to be more for myself first and foremost before they are for anybody else so uh yeah i'm gonna end it on that note uh, I really, really hope that the uh, timestamp thing is compl isn't complicated because that's going to make this video way easier to consume than if I don't. But yeah, I'll see you guys when I see you. Thank you and uh, take it easy.